This is the instructional video for Mystery Card. This is my version of Brother John Hammond's signed card. To begin, we're going to need to construct a gaff. And for this, you're going to need black construction paper. And in my case, I use the King of Diamonds. Now, here's what the finished product looks like. I'll put it up so you can kind of see it against the background. It's a card with construction paper that's also been markered black. And on the other side is the card. And you can cut it almost exactly depending on, you'll see your working surface on whether or not you want to have it exact or just slightly. It doesn't matter if it's not perfect because you're going to be holding it over a black surface. Here's how I do it. I would take another king. I put double stick tape in a square formation around here, place it on construction paper, and just cut around the card. That's all you need to construct the gaff. Um, as for working surfaces, I recommend a black close-up pad. If you're working on a black tablecloth, anything of that sort, uh, this really isn't something to worry about. You have to experiment. Even if the color isn't exactly the same, a lot of this is based on the same principles of thumb tip. So if they're not looking for it and they're not expecting it, then they won't see it because they're not, they're not searching for it. So it's the same concept. Now on to the routine. The setup initially, in my case, I have the uh, King of Diamonds and the King of Hearts. I have a red one for demonstration purposes in a moment. One of the King of Diamonds goes on the bottom of the deck, if you're looking at a face-up deck. And... The King of Diamonds that's gaffed goes above the King of Hearts on the face. So I start off by showing the King of Diamonds and the King of Hearts. Nobody thinks anything of it. At this point, I'm going to turn the deck over, and I like to say I'm going to riffle it once, two, three times, and then find the mystery card. The way I do this is it's a slip cut. I grab all the cards from the middle above in middle grip. Using my left thumb, I pin down the top card and pull away the top section. That's all there is to it. Pull away, and then using your middle and ring finger, out jog the card for half its length. Then I pivot it out and drop it down. This is, in reality, the duplicate King of Diamonds. Next, I have a card picked and signed. So let's take one out that's already signed. For instance, the Four of Hearts, already signed. Now what we're going to do at this point is we're going to learn how to cull the card. So when the card is replaced, I'm going to control it to the bottom of the pile. Here's how that works. The right-hand spread is going to bring all of its cards, in this case the five of spades, until it covers the four of hearts. At the instant that the four of hearts is covered, my left thumb pushes down on that five of spades, clamping it in place. From underneath, my middle ring and forefinger are going to work that four of hearts out of the spread. So it just comes out uh, away from the spread, and then my left fingers are going to continue to push the cards away, allowing the four of hearts to ride under the spread, totally invisible from above. Then I'm going to close up the pile, and in this case, we're going to have the card about half an inch in jogged from the rest of the cards. See, the four of hearts is going to be half an inch in jogged, but it's going to be concealed from above because the cards kind of move down. So I'm going to show you that again, just so you can see the actual how it's going to be after you call. After you come from above, pull it out. You're going to let it ride half an inch lower. And from above, that's going to be concealed because the top cards are also beveled half an inch. At this point, we're going to take all the cards from above, put them aside, and cop the four of hearts. Here's how this works. The cop is when the card lies right along the inside of your palm with the outer right corner right in between your middle and ring fingers. And the angles on this are pretty good. As soon as you turn your hand down, it looks completely natural. Okay? Here are your angles. If you turn too much to this side, somebody's going to see it. If you turn too much to this side, of course, somebody's going to see it. As long as you keep this side of your hand to the audience, nobody can see it. You have pretty much a good 120-degree cross-section where nobody can see this card. The angles are good. It's very natural. So at this point, once you've called the card, you're going to close the deck, squeeze the card, and as you come over with your hand, you're going to turn your hand down. As you put the deck away, draw all attention to the deck, slam it down with a resounding thud. So everyone's over here, looking over here and you have their selected card. At this point, I bring my hands together. I usually push down on the King of Diamonds, and I take up, I'm sorry, I actually have the King of Diamonds. I take up, I'm sorry, I take the King of Diamonds, and it should be on the right side, and I take it underneath the King of Hearts, and I bring both up into my hand, so they're about here, and they can't see this. I turn my hand kind of sideways, and then I square it all up, but I do this concealed. So after I've pushed the two together, I take them, give them a little rub, that's optional to make it look better, bring them together, and then square it all up while your hand is still turned to the side. That way it's concealed that you've added surreptitiously the four of hearts underneath. 
At this point, you're free to deal off the King of Hearts, hold the King of Diamonds, the Gaff, with the blue four below it, turn and show both sides. This is the strength of the trick. You're showing both sides of the cards. Drop them down. Now, it doesn't matter what happens to this black card. You'd like for them to drop pretty flush, but of course, they can't see that because it's black on black. It's like black art. I talk about how I'm not even going to touch this card. Now, I'm going to do one of Brother John Hammond's moves. I'm going to pick up the two cards. In reality, this is now the sign selection. This is the King of Hearts. I'm going to tap them up and down and switch the cards from hand to hand. So now the right hand contains the four. The king comes in from the left, bringing its card underneath. The four goes in from above to sandwich the mystery card. As soon as they come together, my right fingers reach underneath, take out the bottom card, turn it over, and I use the middle card to now pivot over the king of diamonds. So it looks at speed just like all I did, even though we have the King of Diamonds here, this is, it looks just like I picked them up and didn't do anything. It's very, very deceptive because they just saw the King, in the King of Diamonds and the King of Hearts. Let them reach out, turn this card over. As they do, you're going to bring your hands back and you're going to take the Black Art card and knock it off the table. So just to give you an example so you can really see it, if this was the red card on the table, you're just going to bring your hands back nonchalantly while turning over the cards and laugh the gap. There you have it. That's the mystery card.